Hi guys, uh, today we are going to talk about 5G RATCH process and the random access process. Many of you have asked me to cover this topic and uh, I also believe that this is one of the top 5G interview questions as well uh, because in 5G the RATCH process is much more important since especially in NSA a 5G RATCH failure is actually a 5G call drop. So it's very important in that case. And uh, I covered the main aspect of that in the call drop uh, call flow video. Uh, but over here, we're gonna talk about 5G RATCH process in itself, how it works out. And uh, by the end of this video, you should know um, how to troubleshoot uh, major RATCH process failures. So let's start. Um, the first thing to understand that I think everyone knows as well is that 5G, um, RATCH preamble message one is the first thing that the UE sends from uh, to the G node. Now what we need to understand how this preamble works out. So for that one, we can look into the signaling messages. Uh, in case of NSA, this, these signaling messages are in the LTE RRC reconfiguration message, which is used to add the 5G leg. And in case of standalone, it uh, is in the system information. Now, the UE looks into the root sequence index, over here it's 187, and then it looks at the zero correlation zone config, which is 11 here, to find out the cyclic shift size. And then it uh, creates different cyclic shift versions of this 187th root sequence to generate preambles. Now, uh, remember that uh, we do RATCH planning and uh, the RATCH planning uh, output is actually to assign a root sequence index, just like a PCI. So that root sequence index that we assign to the cell is given by this value. So it also means that the neighboring cells should not have a similar root sequence index. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we will have a RATCH clash uh, and a RATCH collision. And in that case, you will have a lower RATCH success rate. So using this one, and this one, the UE generates preambles. Now, the next point would be to find out which preamble format to use, and that is uh, that comes from this PRATCH configuration index. Now, the PRATCH configuration index refers to a table in 3GPP, and it also tells you where uh, in time domain the RATCH preamble needs to be sent. Now, if we have, let's say, multiple slots, then this one will tell you in time domain which slot will be used uh, to send the RATCH preamble. So, for instance, it tells you that it will be sent over here. Now, next thing we need to know, the UE needs to know, is, to v is within this slot, where should we send uh, this uh, preamble, right? And this comes from the message one frequency start. Now, this one tells you exactly the start frequency uh, given by the resource block here. So, the second resource block is where the preamble will st be started from. So, uh, here we can see it accordingly that you're looking at these um, entities, the UE will now know, will now understand where this RATCH preamble message will be sent. So it will be sent at this location. Now, once the UE has sent this message, then it needs to wait for the random access response, which is the message two. Now, uh, how long the UE will wait for the random access response? That is given by this message over here, which is the RA response window. So it, if it says slot 10, that means once the UE has sent this message, it will wait for 10 slots to get a response. If there is no response within 10 slots, then the UE will send the RATCH preamble again. And when it sends the RATCH preamble again, the next time it will increase the power by 2 dB given by this parameter, power ramping step. Okay. Now, uh, do you remember that the UE uh, generates a preamble using root sequence index and the cyclic shift. And it uh, let's say if it sends preamble number five randomly, then the RAR, the random access response, which is message two, it has an indicator uh, telling the UE that this RAR is for preamble number five. So if the UE sent preamble number five, the RAR will have an indicator 
telling the UE that this RAR is for preamble number 5. So the UE knows that this RAR is for this UE. Otherwise, if uh, at this in, at this level, there is no RNTI or CRNT or TRNT at this time for the UE to um, understand that this message is allocated to this UE. So the allocation is understood based on the preamble ID. Secondly, the UE does not know how far the UE is from the G node B. So message 2 also carries a timing advance. So the TA comes in RAR. So if we want to understand, find out the TA value to find out how far is the UE, we can look into the, uh, the message 2 to find the TA value. Now, once the UE gets the TA value, now it knows how far it is from the cell. So it will send message 3 with uh, the adjusted TA value. And this is how we say that RATCH is used to synchronize the UE in uplink. And once the, the G node B gets the message 3, it responds with message 4. And that is where the RATCH process is finished. Now, what are the possible problems that can happen? One problem can happen is that UE is sending RATCH preamble, but the G node B is not getting it. And the UE will keep um, retransmitting in that case until uh, it reaches preamble trans max. Over here is N10. That means UE can send it 10 times. Now, one of the possible issues could be that UE is, is very far away or UE is, uh, is not sending at a very um, high power. In that case, we can increase this value, preamble receive target power. So increasing this will increase the UE's transmit power to send the RATCH preamble, or we can increase the power ramping step so that each retransmission of the RATCH increases the power as well. Now that is one of the options. Another uh, issue could be that uh, the UE uh, is not able to receive the RAR message 2. Now in that case, we need to understand where the failure is. RAR message 2 can, uh, is carried by PDCCH and the PDSCH. So we need to find out whether the PDCCH is the problem or the PDSCH is the problem. So that will be the second step. Uh, the third would be that UE is able to decode the RAR, but the G node B is not able to decode the message 3. Now, uh, in that case, we need to find out uh, why message 3 is failing and uh, because it is an uplink issue. So message th there's usually there's a delta between RATCH preamble to message 3 power. So we need to increase that to increase the message 3's power such that the message 3 is decoded successfully. So that, these kind of things is what we can look into. And uh, in, in short, uh, the RATCH success rate is actually given by message 3 over message 2 or message 3 over message 1. So normally message 1 is nearly equal to message 2 count. So th if you do a message 2 over message 1, your answer should be nearly 100%. Uh, so message 3 over message 2 or message 3 over message 1, the results are normally pretty similar. So uh, that is the RATCH success rate. And uh, usually message 4 does not fail because uh, message 4 is a downlink message. If message 3 is successfully decoded by the G node B, message 4 usually is successful. So uh, that is why uh, the success is counted at message 3. So that's overall from the RATCH perspective. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know um, and I can cover uh, the RATCH planning and uh, further optimization on RATCH as well uh, in the f in later session as well. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.